would have white. We know how strong Dennis is with white after that last battle. But easier said than done. You don't want to be passive. You don't want to play for a draw against Magnus. So actually, if Dennis gets the opportunity, especially if Magnus freestyles like he did in that first game of the day, then I think Dennis should play a bit more ambitiously in the opening, not necessarily try to trade off queens like we saw um, in that middle game earlier. In the meantime, repeat until this last move. Oh, it's the English opening, but a different branch this time. The four knights and uh, very similar with white fiend catching the bishop on g2, but Dennis getting the black bishop to a much more active. Same but different in uh, this opening battle, Robert, and early days, but it looks like both players are well prepared. Well, as you said, the bishop on c5, more active than it was in the previous game. Uh, for white, adopting a pretty similar setup. So Magnus liked what he saw. Of course, he liked the outcome of that first game with the win. And Tanya, I think really for Dennis, the biggest thing is playing a bit faster. It's hard because you're playing uh, the most <laughs> accurate and strongest player. But you need to conserve some of that time. Otherwise, even if you get an even position, you may still collapse. So what do you make of this opening? Do you like Dennis's uh, play thus far? And do you like Magnus's decision to just slightly change the move order and the variation? It was so convincing what happened in game one. And that can also be psychologically difficult for a Dennis because it's the same opening, but it's different side variation of it a very similar structure that we see and dennis is the one who has to switch it up he plays magnus's trademark move as david has told us with that a pawn moving forward the bishop was attacked the bishop falls back we're expecting a trade on e3 but this is interesting because whoever blinks with this tension with the dark squared bishop there are repercussions on the pawn structure if white was to take on b6 right now black ends up with a double pawn but in return gets an open C line, eventually will push that A pawn to A4 to undermine the two pawns B2, A3, which have created a weakness on the B3 square. Meanwhile, if black was to capture on A3, it would have resulted on a doubled E pawn. How would you react in this kind of a situation with this tension? Do you just keep it on or do you trade, David? It's uh, always a question of whether you can stand the tension. Magnus <laughs> cannot, he trades. Uh, I was going to say, try and wait, do it on your own terms, force the opponent to spend their move capturing. But of course, when changes of pawn structure are involved, um, kind of all bets are off. You have to examine the position for what it is. And Magnus, he's got a very specific uh, idea here. He wants to go in with the white queen to b5 potentially and start attacking some weaknesses. Dennis rubs his eyes there. Um, I think finally both players are out of their opening preparation and uh, he has to figure out how to justify he has to do it energetically but he has to justify the compromised structure for black you mentioned tanya if the black b pawn starts moving you're totally fine uh, but for now that isn't possible so yeah it feels like it's in the balance evaluation bar says dead level but a little bit of pressure at least psychologically on dennis uh, bishop to d5 though very quick idea and uh, kind of ruling out that that motif I mentioned, queen to b5 now, would end up on a vulnerable square once the black bishop trades off for the white knight. Black's knight actually has a beautiful post in the middle of the board and uh, highlighted there, knight to d4. So beware, this is getting tactical, this is getting sharp, no longer the slow strategic struggle that we've seen actually in the first two games, I've got to say, Robert. Um, kind of similar characteristics in those first two games, but this one could come to life a bit more. Yeah, and now this last move, e3, it takes away the knight jump that you were referencing. The black knight wanted to step forward. But whenever you push a pawn, you leave a previously covered square behind. And d3, that's an eyesore in this position because once the bishop moves out of the path, the d3 pawn can be captured. And look at Dennis. He's not just grabbing a pawn because he can. It wasn't the computer accurate move. I'm going to take that question mark away if I can. I don't believe that's a question mark. I'm just going to say, you know what? The position is equal. You see what I did there? Equal position, and that is a perfectly good move, protecting your knight preemptively. And by doing so, you can now perhaps take on f3 under more favorable circumstances because the series of trades may still be acceptable for black. So it's an even game, Tanya. I think that Dennis, uh, he has done everything right thus far, but these b pawns, that's the long term issue. Completely agreed. And I think that move by Magnus, placing the queen on a4, it's exactly why you want your queen. It, it stops the advance of both the a pawn and the b pawn from moving forward, trying to create some kind of weaknesses on the queen side. That last move, rook c3, def defends the d3 pawn that you were earlier highlighting. White is also eyeing to get the rook from f1, double up on the c line, trying to get more control of the o only open c file. That said, I think Black's position is also really healthy. Yes, there's a double 
pawn on the B file, but the D3 weakness compensates for those double pawns. Uh, Robert, yeah, highlighting that pawn. It's a key square. It's all about the pawn structure here. Um, I think black needs to keep the queens on due to the uh, compromise structure. But uh, in the meantime, it's white with the first questions to answer. Magnus hesitating from playing the most natural move in the position, which uh, I would say is rook f to c1, activating the white rook that's doing nothing, sitting at home next to its king. Team up, double up, why not? But something has made Magnus pause, and maybe it's to do with the fact that there are threats in the position. Black's bishop can slide back, attacking the white queen in the near future. Um, White's d-pawn is weak. There might be hits against the white knight. I feel that that piece is slightly loose right now, and suddenly a lot of calculation to be done. And... Uh, just if we compare this game, the time consumption due to uh, compared to the previous game, Magnus, he doesn't look happy. Look on the camera, head in hands. The previous game, he was up six minutes at this point. Uh, Dennis was down at two minutes. He had eight. He was loving life. Suddenly, the tables have turned. Uh, far less one-way traffic. It feels like Dennis has really gained so much confidence from that half point, from that earlier draw. And uh, Magnus continuing to pause. Robert, do you smell danger here? What's he thinking about? He's trying to figure out, you know, what is his actual plan? Yes, rook to c1, that is the move I would play in bullet chess. I'd probably play in classical chess as well. But he's trying to figure out where is my next plan coming from? Because let's say pretty much nothing happens. Well, how is white going to attack anything? I'm looking at some point to make a move like d4 as Magnus does double his rooks. I think that is the smart play. But as Tanya and you, David, were both were saying earlier, that if Black can successfully play bishop c6 and start mobilizing the b-pawn, I don't think that you're too unhappy about your position. So it's a game of nuance. It's a game of tempo, a tempo. And for Magnus Carlsen, he properly assessed that he can successfully get his rooks in line with one another. And wow, Dennis gives up the c-file. Are you shocked by that at all, Tanya? Because he is playing natural-looking moves, but now the open file is white. I'm loving what Dennis has done and the confidence with which he's playing this out. He trades one set of rooks, falls back with the bishop because now there'll never be any problem of rook takes rook on the back rank. The knight on e7 doesn't need to keep that rook defended. The bishop on c6 blocks the open c line. And the point is, it's going to be black spawns on the queen side that are going to start pushing and try and create weakness. One pawn, one set of pawns get traded and the uh, ones that you're drawing arrows on, if white is left with that b2 pawn, it becomes a clear target. And it will not be the only one. The principle of two weaknesses. White already has a weakness on d3. Dennis trying to create another one. b4 is a threat that Magnus now has to watch out for. And I think the fact that he paused and took a think Magnus isn't feeling very comfortable with his position anymore, David. Not at all. Magnus is on the back foot. Look at this. Black is advancing. Black has a clear-cut plan. We talked about ease of play, how natural it is. Dennis, he's going to push on the queen side. That's where he's stronger. That's where he has the pawn majority. Always play on the side uh, where you have more pawns or where you have the, uh, the strengths there. And um, Magnus, I think he's playing to equalize. He needs to try and figure out how to trade off pieces, how to uh, get this game to safety. Uh, I loved the feature chat a moment ago where it was saying, Dennis, he's mastered the clock. He's kind of controlling his time so much better. And uh, this feature chat too, Dennis's confidence through the roof. He's now up over a minute on the clock and Magnus, no safety in sight. Uh, Robert, it feels like at the right moment, I'm not sure now or on the next few turns, he has to play a move like pawn to d4, try and trade off everything. Just uh, try to bail out into uh, a holdable endgame, Magnus, because if you get hit by B4, if you're still saddled with that weakness on D3, probably things will turn against him. Do you think Magnus has uh, got safety on his mind? I think he should have safety on his mind. And uh, Magnus Carlsen, he looks at this position and say, I would probably prefer to have this from Black because the ideas are more obvious. B4, uh, trying to create a two-on-one situation, allowing yourself to have an outside pass pawn later on. It's very obvious. And for White, D4 doesn't actually carry a next move threat because of the pins along the D file. And that's exactly why Magnus steps his queen on over to E1. B4, to my eyes, it feels automatic, but this E5 pawn is also loose. You'd prefer to take with the queen on B4 once the pawn trade happens, but with E5 hanging, this actually becomes quite a difficult decision. I like Magnus's last move. The evaluation bar stays where it is, maybe ever so slightly preferable for black, but a complicated struggle. So I'm looking at this really with a fresh set of eyes, and I think that both sides have their chances. Tanya, the one great thing for Dennis, his clock. He is well ahead on time, doing much better than in the previous games. 
the kids learn fast and Robert, Dennis realized in the first two games the amount of pressure on the board and the amount of pressure on the clock. You can't survive that in every game. He needs to keep the clock under control, which he has, and impressively enough, the position as well. Dennis right now definitely has got all these ideas in his mind. He wants to make B4 work, but it's crucial. It's critical that he's able to recapture that pawn with his queen to put pressure on that second weakness that we were talking about, but he goes for it. Is he thinking about going queen takes pawn? He, whoa, an intermezzo. He wants to capture it with a piece, jumps in with a knife, and I see both of you. You're as surprised as I am. Brilliant move, just the vision, the uh, kind of self-control not to automatically recapture, to look for options. And what could be better than a hit on the opponent's rook here uh, with a knight? And Magnus might have to take drastic measures. We saw Magnus shaking his head on the camera. He goes for it, sacrifices a rook for Bishop, and Dennis raises his eyebrows, double exclamation mark. Now it's Magnus smiling. What's happening here? Some mind games at work. Magnus knows that he has now been forced to sacrifice and gamble in a position where he's a, a point up in the match, shaking his head. After this rook is captured, white will take a pawn on a5. White will have two pawns and a bishop for a rook level material but so many open lines, you would tend to think that a rook would thrive. Robert, it's suddenly got chaotic. Magnus, what do you make of his reaction? Yeah, he's just laughing, but I think he's laughing because he overlooked Black's play, and then he felt fortunate that he had rook takes c6 because this does muddy the waters. Objectively, it was the best decision. We saw uh, it given the brilliant move, Glyph, and it was a brilliant decision, but I think it's because Dennis Lazvik is the one posing the problems, and I love the way that Dennis continues. C5, he is freezing White's pawns. They're not going to get connected. This knight can, in the near future, go to B4. Also, A6, unavailable to White because the queen is opened up along the sixth rank. So I do think Dennis is playing the better game between these two. We see that the accuracy is about level, but the mistakes that have been made are worse on Magnus' side than whatever mistakes Dennis might have played thus far. So the clock in Dennis's favor. He has a rook to a bishop and a couple pawns, but those pawns are separated. I'm liking Dennis's chances here, and Magnus, he has a lot to prove. Just incredible stuff. He's up on the clock. Wait, let's do a, a math count here. Dennis has an exchange, but Magnus has two pawns. Magnus has two pawns on the bishop for a rook. So it's level so far, but exactly the pawn structure that you were alluding to, Robert, it creates weaknesses. Black can start targeting these pawns. And if Magnus isn't careful with these pawns, they start falling. This is game Dennis then. The knight can jump to b4, start attacking the d3 pawn. The rook can slide over to b8, start targeting the b2 pawn. The queen can slide to a6, start targeting the, targeting the a5 and the d3 pawn. There are lots of pleasant options for Dennis. Meanwhile, it's Magnus who needs to be precise. I don't know if I'm overstating this or not, but to me, David, it feels like so far, Dennis has outplayed Magnus in this game. Totally. I 100% agree. Uh, the tables have totally turned since the first game of today. Magnus is way behind on the clock. Look at the evaluation bar slipping as well. The margin for error for Magnus is tiny. Dennis is just playing amazing chess right now. And uh, Magnus, we see just below the board uh, that game review. Magnus has found one, one incredible move, one excellent move, double exclamation mark, but that was just to hold the balance. And he's going to have to continue playing uh, brilliantly just to make a draw here. Look at Dennis closing in. The blue arrow gave it away. That was Black's best move. He's zeroed in. He's going to capture that weak white deep pawn we've been talking about for a long, long time. Maybe even now that pawn could just be snapped off the board. The Black Queen doesn't necessarily need to capture yet. It would also cost the uh, e-pawn in the near future. But uh, Dennis, he's the one making magic happen. He's nearly two minutes up on the clock. And Robert, I think this is his opportunity in the match. He needs to strike now. This might be the only chance he gets against Magnus. And for all of our intermediate players in the audience, when you get a position like this from the white side, and this is what Magnus, he's going through, uh, these wheels are turning in his head, he wants to figure out what pieces can be traded. Ideally, he eliminates all of the queen. If he can eliminate the pawns that I'm going to put in red, he's giving up three white pawns for two black pawns. He feels much happier about his position because the pawns are all on one side of the board. So there is an extra rook compared to a minor piece, and White has two pawns uh, for that material deficit. But as he envisions the future, works his way towards draw-ish positions, not necessarily a draw, that's what he is aiming for. He wants to give up d3 right now to take e5. He'll give up his b2 and a5 pawns just to get the c5 pawn. And if we can just 
uh, liquidate, hoover off all those pawns, then suddenly you feel better with just pawns on one side of the board. Ooh, Queen takes d3, played, and now Magnus, the blue arrow, again saying that retreating the bishop is key. That's not obvious. That's by far not obvious. Knight takes pawn is probably the most natural move right now, but there might be some issues on the back rank. Watch out, the white king, the white queen, they're lined up. If the white, if the black queen moves out the way, the black rook infiltrates, it's just game over. So uh, already, Magnus living life on the edge. Oh, Dennis, he looks so confident. Look at him lean back on the camera there. 17 years old, but uh, he knows he's a real boss already. How obvious do you think that is for Magnus right now, Tanya? Bishop to f1, maybe the only move to survive. It's so tough, right? It's a retreating move. You're not taking on e5, but of course it's Magnus Carlsen, and he, of course he finds the best move, but the troubles are far from over. Black can also step forward with the queen. I really like the idea that you're pointing out. Queen c2, start not only hitting and eyeing that b2 pawn, you've got ideas of rook jumping onto d1, at some moment the knight jumping onto d3, but Dennis instead chooses to fall back, which apparently turns out to be the best move. I see the Ivalbar doesn't react, says, why give up that e5 pawn? Queen d5 keeping everything under control. Robert, you were talking about trades of pawns. Meanwhile, Dennis has picked up one pawn and not given any of his. Well, the same mental exercise that Magnus was doing, Dennis, he understands the same. And you look at this, that's why he brought his queen to d5. The queen cannot slide into f3. That is a really difficult move to play. You're giving up your e5 pawn with the tempo against the queen on f3. I don't know how likely this is unless there is a direct path forward. But I feel like the blue arrow telling us it's the only move that keeps the advantage as big as it currently is. Almost two pawn advantage for black. I think that's not very likely. David, how about you? I'm on your team, Robert, as usual. But... Uh giving up a pawn it's not dennis's style unless he can guarantee he's getting something back in return queen to f3 allowing a pawn to drop with a hit on the black queen i don't think it's going to happen uh also there are so many other tempting moves you can push that pawn to e4 just cement it um i guess you can move the black rook you can move the black queen the knight jumps in instead also a really nice move he's actually allowing that e pawn to fall but he's saying okay if you take my knight i will recapture i'm going to trade off queens i'm going to try and simplify down where my black rook will beat your black uh, your white knight so uh magnus now forced to push a pawn to b3 but the bar only drops further and now the idea of queen to f3 makes much more sense than it did earlier because you hit f2 you can close in move in for the kill the white king is a sitting duck I think you might play that move. It looks uh, by far more natural compared to one move ago, Tanya. You hit F2 and you hit the D1 square. White doesn't have the time to take that knight on D3 and capture on E5 because after bishop takes knight, rook takes bishop, knight takes pawn, rook to D1 check would be game over. So queen to F3, I love it. And if Tannis finds this move, Magnus will be in big trouble. I want to hear it from chat, and I want to hear it from you guys. Given this position, both players, under two minutes. Dennis Lazovic plays queen f3. What are the chances of Magnus saving this? Uh, they don't look good, but there <laughs> is this outside pass pawn, and that is dangerous. There are some loose pawns in Black's position, and it's not readily apparent how you deliver the checkmate. So, David, I would say that Dennis has great winning chances. I, I don't know what number to put it, but I'd say more likely that he wins than Magnus Holes. And oh, Knight C1, what is this? Wow, the Black Knight goes on a limb down onto the white first rank to hit the white queen. White counterattacks Magnus now hitting the black queen. And again, the blue arrow says that black's best move by far is to retreat the black queen. And queen exchange, actually, white would potentially be saved, but he finds the best move. Double attack simply, hitting the white queen, hitting the white knight. <laughs> Dennis, we were doubting him, but why? He's actually threatening some nasty checkmates as well. The black rook's coming down to d1, and then taking the white bishop. This is just, I think oh. it's almost game over, Robert. Has he just exactly, won this on the spot? It's exactly what I just uncovered, that he is going to checkmate the white king. The knight on c1, yes, it hits the queen. That looks like it's the job it's doing. It's actually taking away an escape square, a future escape square from the white king. So a brilliant set of moves from Dennis Lazvik. A queen e4 at this stage, yeah, that move became much more natural to his eyes. But he just outplayed Magnus Carlsen in this game. And excuse me, is that not a free knight? Isn't Dennis Lazvik about to be up an entire rook? 
I am mind freaking blown right now. He does a pick up that night. It is an entire rook. It all is down to that A pawn. Just needs to block this out. But perhaps he can actually even still try to just go for checkmate. You can still try to double up on that. I'm trying to think of how you can deliver that mate on h1 is that a possibility but maybe you have to be a little careful maybe you're not in time with rook d1 because a7 is a threat david how do you parry this how, what is the quickest way to wrap this up because rook d1 a7 looks scary it looks scary to allow counterplay right now and uh, why allow counterplay when you've done the hard work you have an extra rook uh, at the very minimum black can go back the black queen can start retreating the black rook still covers the promotion square for now but uh, obviously, if you start retreating, uh, you feel like you lose a bit, bit of momentum. Uh, but Dennis, what will he play? Uh, an obvious move like queen to b8, queen to c7, they should be fine. But uh, he still wants to be accurate. And look at the nerves on the camera, Dennis. He's suddenly he's scratching. He's uh, kind of feeling the tense. Uh, wow, the stakes here. Queen to d5, walking into a light square diagonal, but covering the promotion square. I like it, Robert. White bishop is stuck in two minds. It wants to kick away this black queen, but it will always open up the white king to checks if it ever moves. Um, so I think he's doing a good job for now, Dennis Lazovic. Still some hurdles to, uh, uh, to get through, though. Magnus would love to play bishop g2, but it walks into checkmate. So he first pushes pawn to a7. Now, the good news is one square away from promotion. The bad news is it's easier to team up on, and it can't be defended by a light square bishop. So queen b5, the, the plan is clear for Magnus. Queen to b8 check and then he may tie all of black's force down under 17 seconds now for dennis lazovic he's in huge time to in fact the engine is heading back towards the center uh, queen d8 an inaccurate choice here it was a miss but this position is really challenging for him to survive and the f7 pawn uh oh that's a big problem oh my gosh Oh, this is turning. He oh. gives up the Black Knight. He offers it as bait to try and deflect the White Queen. Double exclamation mark. Queen takes Knight. Black will remove that White A7 pawn, and Black will win this game. Brilliant find from Dennis Lazovic there. But Magnus is still fighting. What about the F7 square we mentioned, Tanya? Bishop c4, you don't take the knight, you don't give up your key pawn, e a7, but now there's a double threat. The knight on a, a b3 is hanging the pawn on f7. Dennis says you can take a pawn on f7. It's only a check. My king is super safe on h8. There are no more checks to follow. And now the c pawn can start moving forward. Is bishop d5 an idea? But the point is that black will capture the a7 pawn, eventually capture that bishop on d5. So bishop d5 is not a resource for white Robert here. He's trying to put pressure. But Dan is still in driver's seat. This pawn needed to be on e4. The bishop needs to safely hit d5. But as you said, the rook will distract the queen. Magnus himself, now he's at 10 seconds. He also is seeing a pass pawn run up the board. Bishop g6, it makes a mating net around the black king. But look at Dennis go. It's the white king that isn't safe either. And black's uh, pass pawn is just as dangerous as white's. Dennis is winning. He knows he's winning. It's only the clock that can stop him now. Magnus at one second. He moves his queen, oh but God. now a check. Surely Dennis has got this in the back. He just needs to get rid of that white A pawn, and he's going to do it. He's going to win this game. He's going to beat Magnus Carlsen. Stop him now, surely. Dennis is Ooh. seconds away from what is the biggest win of his career, but watch out, there is a checkmate in one. How do you fight it? Do you push the G-pawn? Do you slide up with your king? He does it. He is fighting it, but he still needs to be careful. Magnus is not going to let this be easy. There's so many checks against that black king. There are no pawns in front of it. And here comes another mating net. The queen can slide back to h7 at any moment, but he's ready to take this pawn on e6. Perfect defense from Dennis. Wow. Amazing defense. Look how he's organized himself. The black queen now defending the king. The black rook on a nice safe square. The black knight is defended as well. Magnus swearing. Magnus cursing his luck here. He knows Dennis has done perfectly. And he's about to lose with white Magnus. This nearly never happens. The pawn drops. Magnus resigns. Dennis takes a historic victory.